PVC. Okay, this will be a quick one. I had some extra PVC trim left over from cutting out some letters for a school system. Uh, so I have 39 inches by the five and a half and I just did a 36 inch sign. I'm gonna just pocket away all of the material leaving an eighth inch raised area for saying the name of the school. And uh, I didn't try to match their font. I just used technical or some one of the handwritten fonts. I think it was technical. Uh, quarter inch uh, up spiral bit for the uh, the quick clearing and then an eighth inch spiral O to clear out tight and around the letters. So real quick setup. Uh, I did hold it down a little odd um, because I didn't, I, I had some other products that I was cutting earlier today. So I'll show you how I did that. Okay, what I did here was I brought the spindle down and the bit down, you can see it. Um, I placed the material up against the bit here and screwed it in. I've got 39 inches and I'm doing 36 inch uh, sign. So uh, I'm going to have an inch and a half here and I'm going to just basically cut pocket this out and leave a, a, a bit of a ledge that I'll cut off and clean up with a, a trim router with a flush bit. So started the uh, bit here and moved it down just using the control uh, panel and brought it to here. I'll push the material up against it and then I know that I'm squared with the X and the Y. Um, and then I'll screw it down again at the end and I'll have an extra inch and a half that I'm in the area that I'm not cutting. I'm not cutting, the, my border cut's not cutting all the way through the material. I'm doing 0.72 on a 0.75 thick material. So I'll have 30 thousandths that I'll cut off with the trim router. Pretty quick, pretty simple. Okay, here at the control panel. Uh, one of the little tricks here is when you have a full um, directory, in this case I'm in family living, and I've got two different files. Again, I name my files a little differently than some people do. I name it like the job name Simmons 1 for the first tool. Simmons 2 for the second tool, and then I, because of old school stuff and legacy machines, I do Simmons 1 space P125, or I'm sorry, P25 for the first file. That's going to be my quarter inch uh, bit that I'm going to use. And then the second file would be Simmons 2 P125, which is the cleanup bit with the eighth inch bit. So when you have multiple files here, sometimes it's hard to tell. So just hold your finger down on it and it will tell you what the file name is. So that's Simmons first tool and it's a 0.125. Uh, sorry, 0.25, I'm sitting here looking at it. And if I hold it down on this, this is the second tool, Simmons 2, second tool, with a 0.125 tool. So I know what I'm doing it with it. I don't have to print out the job sheet necessarily. So I'm just gonna tag that one, load it, preps the file. I've already touched off the um, tool with the prior material. So I'm not gonna change the depth, the Z, and touch off the tool again. I'm going to leave that, and I have uh, touched it for the the material X and Y home. So we're good to go. Again, read the job name. That's it. Everything else is set. Look at the job. See if it looks right. I didn't rotate my job, so I'm going to go back to VCarve and rotate the job 90 degrees, and save the uh, G code back out and send it to the machine using uh, the FTP software. So silly mistake. Okay, I'm not even going to uh, use the uh, capturing software. Uh, I like to look at it and do my signs this way so I can see them if it's a wide sign. Uh, so when I send it to the machine, I've got to rotate it. So I'm going to grab everything and rotate it 90 degrees and apply it. And that'll rotate my text. And then I'm going to go into my materials and rotate it. And I've got 36 by 5.5. I'm going to do 5.5, tab 36, keep the thickness the same, and that'll rotate my materials. And that's just my leftover tool path, if I can come back over here and turn that off. So that all looks good, and I'll tell it to calculate everything. It does, all of it's done. I'm going to send it to the machine, and I'm going to pick the hover over this and it'll tell show me I'm gonna zoom in just so you can see here we go uh, that'll tell me that I'm using a quarter inch tool and the out the profile outline cut is a quarter inch tool as well and then the pocketing for the letters the close pocketing is with an eighth inch tool so I'm gonna take the first two save them save the tool path zoom out so you can see and that's Simmons one and the time is 9.37. I do want to replace it. And I'm going to slide down, turn those two off. And do this one. Save that. 
and that'll be Simmons 2. And then what I do is I go into FileZilla and I take those directly off the machine right now. So they're no longer on the machine. And then I come over to this side and I hit the right button and refresh everything. So that should see, say 9.37 is my time. So I know those, it's, although it's the same file name, that is the updated file. I've pulled it over, it's at the machine. I'll go right back to the machine, load it again, and we'll be good to go. So I'm gonna come to the machine, close up my file folder, back in, resend it, no. repick the material orientation, resend it. Still silly, and it's just that I'm tired and was re was going to go home, but then I figured, hey, I can just knock this out and give it to them. I'm late getting the other signed cut for them, um, and and that all looks right. So that's the orientation of the job on the machine, and that is correct. If I zoom out a little bit, so I'm ready to go. I'm just going to load the job, tell it to go, and off we go. I am going to put the dust shoe in. And this will take, I think it's a total of 40 minutes with both cutters. Uh, so I'm just going to let it go. I'm going to close up the shop and we'll see the finished product tomorrow. This PVC is an interesting material. I had read about it on the internet that people like it for sign making because it's very stable. You can just uh, paint it with acrylic paints. It lasts longer than painting on wood. And I had bought some primed uh, pine. Uh, and had cut the letters out on it, but I just didn't care for it. Uh, the core of it, although it was pine, it started popping out and it just wasn't clean. So uh, I grabbed a couple pieces of this and it, it's more expensive, but gosh, it sure is nice just to cut it and be done with it. Um, very little touching of it. Um, I had tabs when I cut the letters out and I had just set up the uh, flush trim bit on the router, inverted it and knocked them right off. It was very quick. I could cut the words I think I cut family while it was cutting living and uh and just clean the tabs up and it was fine and very quick so this is a nice material to work with so I'm hogging it out with the quarter inch bit <coughs> I'm taking a quarter inch depth of cut and so the letters are going to be raised a quarter and uh, I just let v -carb do the optimization it does a great job it jumps around the table sometimes and you wonder why I did it that way but uh, you know what the days of me programming G-Code, they're long gone. I rely on the drawing and let the machine and the software do the work. So I program this at 100 inches per minute and a uh, quarter inch depth of cut with a quarter inch. This is a spiral O uh, in it. So it should do a, a fairly quick, clean job and should have a nice little detail sign just to give them with the leftover material. So okay, here you can see the chip load of the quarter inch tool. What you've got to realize too, though, is that sometimes it will break a piece off, and this tends to get caught in the uh, dust extraction. So I wasn't watching it, and it you know, built up a lot of it on the table. It doesn't really matter, because when the spindle comes back around and cuts it, it typically creates enough wind and movement to get everything out of the way. So now I'm doing the finishing cut with the 8 inch spiral lobe. I'm just going there and kissing in the areas uh, to make the final cut. And in, in some areas, I had to get in there in the small letters. Uh, it cut the, the gap there between the S and the C and things like that. So um, just because of spacing, that's how it's going to look. Swing around the other side to look at it normal. So when this is all cleaned out and everything, it'll look nice. I'll just, I'm just going to uh, hit it with the uh, shop back and clean it up a little bit. And uh, it'll be a nice little sign. It, it's a gimme. I was a little late getting this to them. Um, so I wanted to just do something with a spare uh, leftover material. Being PVC, you can paint it, put it outside as a bulletin board or a sign board or whatever, and it'll look, it'll look good. It holds paint better than the wood. And the finished product for cutting the letters was much easier and faster with this, too. A little more expensive than painted pine, but my goodness, no touching after that. I mean, just, just knock it off. In my case, I cut the tabs off with a flush bit router, and uh, off we go. This was an old video I had shot a while back and just never processed and edited it to post it. Um, 
one of the things that I saw when I was looking at it is that I don't want to leave you the impression that you can leave that much debris in these upper troughs. If you have a lot of debris and swarf and uh, dust in there uh, and you're running at a relatively high speed, your machine can skip a gear. So that should be kept clean. Um, I'll be posting new videos of some modifications I've made to connect to a four inch dust collector. Um, I've also just put dropped little quarter inch panels on here that were 12 inches wide and however wide they need to be six inches. And just, I used painter's tape on the front of my uh, carriage so that it just, it blocked the ability for the bit to throw the dust out and have it be airborne and come back in on the tracks. Um, Another trick I use is I hook an exhaust hose to the shop vac. So the exhaust from the shop vac I use as a very low pressure blower uh, so you can keep the tracks clean. I want this machine to run on unattended. That is the way you want to run a CNC machine. Uh, so I don't want it to stand here and do it, but I do need to keep it clean. So there's all kinds of different ways uh, for you to do that, but you have to watch. Uh, it's going to vary on the material you're using, the cutting speeds, what type of bits, because the I can use a different cutter shape and it will throw or, or disperse the debris differently. So that's all part of learning the machines and what, what you have to do to, to properly utilize a machine. It's a tool and um, that's important to, to be thinking about. So that was just a note that I saw because there was a lot of debris in the uh, upper tracks and um, I was cutting slow because it was doing this intricate pocketing, uh, so it didn't skip a, a cog or anything, but uh, could have if I was cutting in a different technique. So just a quick note. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to call. Uh, that's 205-871-6618. Any questions about the Yeti Smart Bench, I'd be happy to help you in any way I can. Um, or you can go to yetismartbench.com slash contact page and fill in the contact page. Let me know what you want to cut, what software you, you already know, what, what your experience levels are. Fill that in and I'll get back with you and we'll get you underway. Thanks.